International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Quality and speed are our culture and the keys to our success. Welcome to the audio summary section of the International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Hello, my name is Samia Hurst. Together with my colleagues Melina Schindler, Susan Gould and Marianne Danis, I co-authored a paper entitled Swiss Chat, Citizens Discuss Priorities for Swiss Health Insurance Coverage. This was a wonderful study to run. We met a bunch of very diverse people who turned out to be much smarter and more thoughtful than many might have given them credit for. And to reach them, we had to take trains to 12 different Swiss cities, so that didn't hurt either. We ran this study because of a question that lies at the heart of questions regarding resource allocation in healthcare. What is fair distribution? There are, of course, several candidate answers to this question, but they yield conflicting answers. Now, to get past this, many have argued for a form of democratic legitimacy or procedural fairness instead. The idea is that any result of a distribution scheme has to be the sort that we would agree to have applied to us, or it is not entirely fair. Uh, in other words, we need to know what citizens in a country where such decisions are being discussed would or would not agree to. Public participation, in other words, may be required. But how to get public participation in such decisions? That turns out to be difficult. Discussions about priority setting in healthcare tend to be technically difficult. They involve a lot of knowledge that ordinary citizens typically don't have. They're also emotionally laden. They're very hard to reach, especially if we are personally involved. And finally, they're not the kind of questions that even very involved democracies tend to ask of their population. Democracies tend to ask closed-ended questions. Do you accept or do you refuse whatever is being proposed? We're only very rarely presented with alternatives, let alone multiple alternatives. So having public involvement in resource allocation decisions is going to be a tough problem. Luckily, it's just the sort of tough problem that some researchers love to tackle. And two of our colleagues, Susan Gould and Marion Danis, have spent years developing a serious game called CHAT, Choosing Health Plans All Together, designed to do just that, to enable ordinary citizens to participate in tough trade-offs regarding healthcare without previous knowledge. All the knowledge actually is integrated into the structure of the game so that the trade-offs they are presented with and the examples they are presented with teach them, so to speak, what is realistic and what is not. So we took this tool, this serious game, this chat exercise, we adapted it to Switzerland and off we went. So what did we find out? First, we found out that when given the appropriate tools, citizens are very much able to engage in very complex trade-offs in healthcare and to give very good arguments for them as well. Thank you very much. So this was an encouraging finding, of course. Many countries are faced with tough decisions around healthcare spending and having public input would facilitate such decisions and possibly lend them greater political feasibility and legitimacy as well. We're now trying to find money to develop a website where um, anyone will be able to play the game online directly and see, see what it's like and also give uh, their own considered opinion through the exercise. What did our participants prioritize? Well, we found that they assigned lower priority to interventions that lacked proof of effectiveness and who showed a benefit that was very small. The money they saved in this way, they mostly reinvested into greater coverage for long-term care. And the final result, and perhaps the most intriguing one, was one we found right at the end. We asked one final question. If we had given you more money, what would you have spent it on? And surprisingly, quite a number of our participants said, well, nothing really, I have enough. This is interesting because demand for healthcare is typically viewed as being bottomless, as being literally infinite. Now, granted, Switzerland is a rich country with a rich healthcare system, but here we were with participants telling us that they had reached a threshold, that they had reached sufficient coverage. Our final result then was that, given the right set of circumstances, there could perhaps be enough healthcare.